I'm Darius Clark of I-75 CPA Review, the number one course supplement where the right teacher makes all the difference. And today, are you ready to learn about overhead variances? So be sure and watch this video to the end. Possibly the toughest part of BEC is this concept of overhead variances. Variances in general are considered pretty sophisticated. Now to learn overhead variances, you should already have some exposure to direct material and direct labor variances. The overall manufacturing overhead variance can be broken into variable and fixed overhead variances. So there's going to be a total of four overhead variances. Two are gonna be variable overhead and two are gonna be fixed overhead. So let's start with the variable overhead variance. It gets broken down into variable overhead rate variance, focuses on spending, and the variable overhead efficiency variance. So two overhead variances that are variable and two overhead variances that are fixed. In each case, one focuses on spending and the other focuses on efficiency, much like we saw with direct material and direct labor. If you recall, there's a direct material spending variance and a direct material efficiency variance. Well, it's gonna be the same situation for variable overhead. There's gonna be one variable overhead variance for spending and one for efficiency. And then when we get to fixed overhead variances, there's going to be two of those, one that focuses on spending and one that focuses on efficiency. So they come as a team. There are four overhead variances. We're gonna start with the variable overhead variances. There's two of those. And specifically, we're going to start with the one variable overhead variance that focuses on spending. So they tell us that Rhodes Corp applies overhead to production on the basis of direct labor hours worked. And on the CPA exam, I can tell you that almost every problem you're going to get on variable overhead, they're going to use direct labor hours as the cost driver, just like we are here. So Rhodes Corp is going to apply overhead to production on the basis of direct labor hours work. That means the more direct labor hours work, the more variable overhead they're going to apply. And the reason why they chose direct labor hours as the cost driver most likely is because they feel that direct labor hours is what's driving the variable overhead. They feel that as people work, more variable overhead cost is incurred. All right, so all we know so far is Rhodes Corp applies overhead to production on the basis of direct labor hours worked. And 5,000 units were manufactured for the period and 15,400 actual hours were worked. And what do we want to know? We want to know what's the variable overhead spending variance. How much did they spend on variable overhead compared to what they budgeted? And we know that 5,000 units were manufactured, 15,400 actual hours were worked. They tell us that estimated or standard variable overhead is $1.50 per hour based on a relevant range of 16,000 hours worked. Now they're going to tell us how many hours were worked, 15,400 hours were worked. So now we know what the standard variable overhead cost should be because it should be based on $1.50 per hour times the number of hours worked of 15,400, the standard variable overhead cost should have been 23,100 for 15,400 hours worked. So then we can compare the standard variable overhead cost of 23,1 to the actual variable overhead cost incurred based on working those same 15,400 hours, it says if actual variable overhead cost is only 22,800, then variable overhead spending variance is actually favorable, $300 favorable. Why? Because we only spent 22,800 to work those 15,400 hours. We only spent that much on variable overhead compared to the standard of 23,100, which we calculated based on working 15,400 hours at the $1.50 standard rate. So the variable overhead spending variance is where we compare the actual variable overhead cost incurred of 22,800, which they gave us, to the standard variable overhead cost based on working 15,400 hours, 
which was 23,100. So it looks like we spent less on variable overhead than we budgeted. So far we know our first variance for overhead is a favorable one. So take out a piece of paper and write down variable overhead spending, $300 favorable. Okay, now we move from variable overhead spending to variable overhead efficiency variance. What's this going to focus on? Well, they told us back in the previous slide that 5,000 units were manufactured. And they told us on the previous slide that not only 5,000 units were manufactured, but 15,400 actual hours were worked. So we knew that already. Now when we switch from spending to efficiency, we need to know how many hours does it take to produce each unit. And it tells us here each unit is supposed to take only three hours of labor time. So if 5,000 units were manufactured, it should have only taken 15,000 total hours. Here's where efficiency takes over from spending. If 5,000 units were manufactured, direct labor should have only worked 15,000 hours, but they told us they worked 15,400 hours. That's an inefficient 400 extra hours that were needed to produce the same number of units. So what does that mean? 400 extra hours times the standard variable overhead rate of $1.50 per hour equals $600 of unfavorable variable overhead efficiency. And you knew it had to be unfavorable because we took 400 more hours than the standard would have allowed. The standard would have only allowed 15,000 hours to produce 5,000 units. And we took 15,400. Why? Because they told us each unit is supposed to take three hours of labor time. So now we have our variable overhead variances down. We have $600 of unfavorable variable overhead efficiency, but on the previous slide, we had $300 of favorable variable overhead spending. So our net overhead variance, just based on the variable overhead so far, is 300 unfavorable. Put the two together, the two variances together, and so far we have 300 unfavorable. Another thing we could say is our net overhead variance is $300 unfavorable. Okay, two overhead variances down, two to go. Now we focus on the fixed overhead variances. There's two of those, one for spending and one for efficiency. We'll start with the fixed overhead spending variance. Fixed overhead spending variance is where we compare the actual fixed overhead to the budgeted amount. Well, the actual fixed overhead cost would have to be given. The exam's gonna have to give you that because actual fixed overhead is not based on hours worked or units produced. It's not variable, it's fixed. So they're gonna have to tell you what the actual fixed overhead cost was. And let's say they tell you that actual fixed overhead cost is $8,100. So now what we need to know is what's the budgeted fixed overhead cost. If they tell us it's $8,000, then we can calculate the fixed overhead spending variance as $100 unfavorable. Why? Because if we were supposed to spend only 8,000 on fixed overhead, but the actual cost was 8,100, we'd have $100 of unfavorable fixed overhead spending. And that would be very quick calculation if what they gave you was the budgeted fixed overhead total cost of $8,000. But they may not give you that. The exam might not give you that. They might instead have to give you something. They'll give you fixed overhead per unit. They'll give you budgeted fixed overhead per unit. Instead of giving you the $8,000, and saying, here's budgeted fixed overhead total cost, they'll give you maybe budgeted fixed overhead cost per unit. And we know that each unit involves three hours of labor. So they would have to say something like 50 cents would be the budgeted fixed overhead per three hours of labor. So they're either going to give you the 50 cent figure, which is budgeted fixed overhead per unit per three hours of labor, or they're going to just give you the $8,000 of budgeted fixed overhead. So if they only give you the 50 cent figure and say that 50 cents equals budgeted fixed overhead per three hours of labor, then you could multiply 50 cents times 16,000 budgeted hours in the relevant range 
and you'd get 8,000 of budgeted fixed overhead. Because remember, fixed costs don't change over the relevant range. So you would budget the same fixed overhead as long as you're within the 16,000 hours that we said is the relevant range. So your budgeted fixed overhead would be determinable by you to be $8,000 if they gave you the 50 cent figure, which is the budgeted fixed overhead per unit per three hours of labor because it takes three hours of labor to make a unit, then you would have to take 50 cents, multiply by the budgeted hours, which are 16,000 in the relevant range, and 8,000 would be your budgeted fixed overhead. And that would bring you back to the same place where you could compare the $8,000 budgeted fixed overhead that you just calculated to the actual fixed overhead that they have to give you of 8100 and get that same hundred dollars of unfavorable fixed overhead spending so we'd say that the fixed overhead spending variance is 100 unfavorable so let's see where we've come from so far here's what we've done so far we did the variable overhead spending variance we said 300 favorable then we went on to variable overhead efficiency we said 600 unfavorable then we just did fixed overhead spending 100 unfavorable so where do we sit right now we've got an unfavorable of four hundred dollars net when you put the two unfavorables together get 700 subtract the 300 which is favorable you're still at a 400 unfavorable net overhead variance with one variance to go now let's look at the final one the fixed overhead volume variance so we know the company has the capacity to work 16,000 hours because that was the relevant range. Well, that's the equivalent of 5333 units. Why? 16,000 hours divided by three standard hours per unit. So the standard number of units produced would be 5333. But since only 5,000 units were produced, they told us that in the facts, the production volume variance is unfavorable because we only produced 5,000 units when we could have produced 5333. So that's an unfavorable production volume variance. But by how much? Well, those 333 less units, less than the standard, times three standard hours each equals 1,000 hours. 1,000 hours times 50 cents, which is the standard fixed overhead rate for three hours of labor, equals $500 unfavorable fixed overhead volume variance. We already knew that the fixed overhead volume variance was going to be unfavorable simply based on producing 333 less units than budgeted. All right, let's look at all four overhead variances now. The variable overhead spending variance came out to 300 favorable, but unfortunately that was the only favorable variance because the variable overhead efficiency variance came out 600 unfavorable. Then we went on to fixed overhead and both of those variances were unfavorable. The spending was unfavorable by 100, and the efficiency, the volume variance, was 500 unfavorable. So our net overhead variance, net of the four, comes out to $900 unfavorable. And early on in this video, I told you that these overhead variances come as a team, which means we're not done until we net out the four overhead variances to one figure. In this case, it's 900 unfavorable. And if you found this video easy to follow, please hit the like and subscribe button because it helps the channel out a lot. And if you need more help with variances or any part of BEC, go to cpaexamtutoring.com and get yourself on I-75, the number one course supplement where the right teacher makes all the difference.